Fire in the hole. And we're back working on the world's cheapest 240SX turbo drift build. And if you didn't watch the last video, it's right here. We didn't get it running because whoever wired the car sucks. I mean, I wired half of it. The other guy, that guy sucks. So today we are going to rewire the coil, which is down on the frame rail now because the entire car was rewired to move all of the relays to the back. Again, that guy, not me. I need to figure out what's going on with the coil wiring. So I ran down to the junkyard. I found a D21 that had the correct pigtails so I could just make my own harness basically and get rid of everything that that guy did because it's not working. So we've confirmed through the ECU that we have ignition, we've got injector pulse, we've got timing, we've got all the good stuff on my end but there is nothing happening with the coil. This motor is actually out of a Nissan D21 uh, and it's just, it's in here now, okay? I'll link some videos in the description to all of this, because it's a lot. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, this is the wiring for a D21 coil and condenser. It's $2 at you pull it. So, come on, it's perfect. In addition to rewiring the coil, getting it to actually fire, filling up the gas tank, we are going to put the new exhaust on. Yes, finally got the new little turbo elbow for the turbo two intercooler pipe. We're also gonna be installing the wire from the battery to the starter because we can't run two batteries in the 240 anymore. <laughs> and an air filter. And then we're gonna fire it up. There's a couple of wires in here we don't need that are for the uh, EGR system. And we're not running any emissions on this rig because we're not California. And if you look at this, these are like 14 gauge. And the wires that are in the harness for the S13 coil are are tiny. I mean, they're, they're probably like 22, 20. So this is for your condenser. And this is for the coil itself. So after going through it, this is what we end up with. You've got your condenser connector and the coil connector. The blue wires get connected together. The black and white is your power. The black and pink is your ground, which I just extended. This is the only color 14 gauge wire I had. And your shielded wire is obviously the signal that goes to the micro squirt. So this is kind of what I had going. You can see the wiring loom, whoever put this thing together, they just wrapped it completely in tape all the way through the car. So we're going to just cut these two connectors off and replace them with the new pigtail. And just get it hardwired into power and a signal and start testing on the coil and the distributor. And then fire this thing up, you know. It's about time. Alright, so we've got the spark plugs in. I've got the new coil harness built and plugged into the signal from the ECU. So now we're gonna test on the coil and see if we have spark at the spark plugs. And if not, we'll go back to the coil. And if it's there, we'll go to the distributor, blah, blah, blah. That's how it works. Hopefully, it just works. We do have injector pulse, so the injectors are working, we're getting timing, and we just need spark. So we're gonna keep an eye on these two spark plugs and uh, turn it over. We'll use the spark test function on the micro squirt. Go in here and enable test mode and see if we get spark. Sparking on cylinder number two looks like. So we're good there. That was 6,000 RPM. We're gonna bring this up to 40. That's 3,000 RPM. And you can actually hear that change. That means everything's functioning well. Let's keep an eye on these two spark plugs here. See if we get spark on each one. If one's working, both of them should be good to go. So we got spark and everything seems to be functioning well. Now we're gonna just clean up the coil because I didn't make it look nice. I was just testing on what was making the coil run or not. So just for you, if you are wiring up a KA24E uh, out of a D21, 
which both should be relatively the same. You have your 12 volt power supply from the black and white, you have your ground from the black and pink, and then you have your signal from the micro squirt going into the shielded white wire, which is obviously a very small wire. This is like a 20 gauge or a, I don't know, 16 gauge, something like that. And then these blue wires just get tied together. They go from the condenser to the coil, and that just allows the voltage to dissipate and now go back into the computer, because that's how you ruin things. So let's get uh, the wiring wrapped up and clean this up a little bit, get the battery out of here, get the battery cable installed. We also have to fabricate the exhaust. So we're going to take some stainless steel that I brought. Oh and make us a little downpipe, well, an up pipe, I guess. And I have a tractor flap, so we're gonna stick a tractor flap on it too. <laughs> Come on now. battery in, we've got the cables run up to the front, we have the coil completely wired in, we've got our signal going to the coil, everything looks good. The only sensors we don't have are the O2 sensor, which is not going to be an issue for idling, and the coolant gauge that I just haven't run inside yet. Um, I left it right there because I'll forget about it if I run it inside and then leave it underneath the kick panel. So from here I want to get an exhaust on it because once I get it fired up, I'm gonna let it idle. We're still gonna need the 750cc injectors to tune it because I think it has like one, two, 260s in it, whatever factory D21 is. So that'll need to be ch changed. It, it'll idle on those just fine, um, but we won't be able to get into boost at all. We got the uh, elbow. It's a very small turbo, so I didn't have the uh, two inch to two and a half inch. It's pretty random. Looking at it, it's definitely gonna be interfering with this wheel. But let's get this installed just for now, get it idling. Cut the elbow, looks pretty good. We'll get our charge pipe here. Mark it and cut it. Clamp it together, we'll be good to go. This is definitely gonna have to get changed due to interference with the wheel and tire, but we can tune it and drive straight. So we're gonna do that. Found the perfect air filter too. Just straight out the hood. Good to go. Another beater on the road. So we're gonna use the provided flange from the turbo to build the exhaust to go up through the hood. Eventually, maybe it'll get a full exhaust. I don't know. But comes with all the things are stainless steel. The only stainless steel I have is three inch and the tractor flap is three inch. So what we're gonna do is figure out how to get this on here without interfering with the clamp. All right, we're gonna cut that off so it's parallel with the top of this. And then we'll start cutting this to taper it down to two and a half inch. All right, so I just tacked it on for now because we're probably gonna put an exhaust on it right away. But for now, to get it started and tuned, we'll just stick it up through the uh, hood Get this thing clamped on and see if we can fire it up. Well, I think it's time to throw some gas in it. Oh, okay. All right, we're going to cycle the fuel pump and see if we have any leaks. Let's uh, hook up the computer, make sure everything's still working. Let's calibrate the throttle position sensor real quick because it looks way off. It's at 40%, but we're closed. So that doesn't make sense. Okay. 
So, looks good. Let's test the injector real quick. Let the fuel pump run for a little bit. Okay, it's pressurized. I don't see any fuel. Let's turn it over. There should be fuel inside the cylinders now. Definitely scared me. Throttle position sensor is f***ed up, that's for sure. This is Yoshi's tune, so I didn't have the injector size right. Let's try this again. Alright, ready? Well, we're definitely missing a cylinder. <laughs> or two. <laughs> Sounding good though. All right. We got oil in the cup. I was really concerned we weren't gonna get oil up to the head, but we've got oil. Looks good. Doesn't smell like water or anything. I was a little concerned that the front cover was gonna leak some water into the pan. I just, I don't like the design of the, the front case on these. So we're gonna get this oil line attached to the top of that turbo, fire this thing back up, maybe uh, get a little heat into it. We don't have a fan belt, so we'll have to get one of those. We're gonna check for leaks again. I don't smell any raw fuel, so that's good. We're gonna fire it up, maybe it'll start without me Messing with the injectors again. Fire in the hole. So we've got 88, 88, 93, 93. So I think these front two aren't firing. Could be an injector issue. Timing's a little off. I'm gonna pull that bolt out and see if I can get a little bit more adjustment on the distributor. That's what it sounds like. Give it a little bit more timing. <laughs> Let's throw a timing light on it, see where we're at. Should have done that a little while ago, but that's all right. It sounded cool, it sounded all right.
All right, so I'm gonna get uh, a new throttle position sensor because this one, it's not reading accurately. And my engine speed is showing 3000 RPM when we're actually at 900. So that's about the extent of the knowledge I have for tuning things, figuring out trigger wheel positions and all of that. I'm gonna have Eric come tune this thing just so that we can make sure everything's dialed in correctly. The engine sounds nice. If you haven't seen this car, I actually had the motor out. I pulled all the bearings out and put new ones in. So everything seems to be sounding okay. Um, I'm gonna let it idle for just a little bit longer and we're gonna just check over fluids and make sure everything's okay. We got it running. That's all I needed to get done. I needed to make sure I had everything in there so that Eric can come and get it tuned. The worst thing to do to your tuner is actually get him out there before the car is ready and then he's troubleshooting your problems and making it harder on him. That's just, that's not how you do it. Make sure the car is on and dialed and you have everything figured out so that he has to plug into it and just tune it. That's, that's what they're there for. They're not your personal mechanic to come in and help you. Although Eric will come in and, and completely <laughs> fix that shit, but he doesn't like to. So if you can make it easier on your tuners, do that. There you have it. It runs on all cylinders. It sounds good. It has a little bit of a tick up on the top end. I think it's probably just because it's been sitting for a little while and I haven't had you know, higher RPMs in there and it hasn't kind of just gotten free. But she's basically done. All we have to do is get the rear brakes on, bleed the brakes, get the clutch line installed, bleed the clutch. I think I need a slave cylinder. I guarantee I have one. We'll slap one of those things in there, get some wheels on it, and, and then she's basically done. We have to do probably a halo and a harness bar just because I don't want to put my girlfriend in here unless she has harnesses on it um, because that would make me feel better. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like, leave a comment, hit the post notifications because it really helps out the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. If you want to see more of the car, check the description. You can see all the videos from when I picked this thing up and there was nothing in it to where it's running now. We've actually got it done for about three, three weeks, four weeks, about a month from having this thing, a chassis to a running car. And obviously it's not rolling but it's got full drivetrain, everything runs, just need to get it tuned, put the brakes in it, I guess, because you have to stop sometimes. And there's no oil on the ground. That's a first for me. <laughs>